We got two. We got a good. We got a good one. We got a good one. I've been using this mic now for a couple of weeks. We got a good one. A good one. Break out your wallets because it's going to empty them. We're going to empty your wallets right now. Sorry. Sorry about that. But we're going to empty these wallets out right now. Oh, get in the door. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Tog Audio here. Back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And boy howdy, do we have a couple of mics in the booth today to review, to go over, to let you guys take a listen to. I am really super excited about this, this, uh, this matchup, this pair here. Two really high-end, high-end microphones. This one's mine. This one is on loan. Daniel from Plus24 out in Los Angeles. Daniel, thank you so much for loaning me this microphone. This has just been a real treat to use, man. This is a this is a super cool microphone, and uh, I'd, I'm really excited to share. <laughs> I'm excited to share this one with you guys. Now, I, I don't know. Do I label this one promoted content? Do I label this sponsored? I don't know. You guys are gonna tell me. Tell me, this microphone is on loan. It's on loan from a company that I just gave the name of Plus Twenty Four. I'm not being compensated for it. I don't get to keep this microphone. They're not paying me. They just said, do you want to test this microphone? I said, yes. But a company gave it to me and not just a, just, not just a regular booth junkie. So maybe I marked this as promoted content. I don't know. It doesn't matter because we're going to do it the same way that we always do it. What do we have in the booth here, Mike? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we got going on here. As I said, this, this microphone right here, this is a Neumann TLM-103. This is my microphone. Had it for a long time. One of the staples here in the booth. I use it for a lot for voiceover. One of my favorites. And very common for a voiceover. This microphone was actually pretty new to me. I, I know the brand, but I don't know this microphone very well. And I'm really just super excited to use it. This is made by a company called Sanken. S-A-N-K-E-N. Sanken. And this is the CU-51 microphone and this is a definitely a high-end microphone costs a little bit more than what maybe twice as much as my as my 103 this microphone will run you two thousand twenty one hundred dollars go ask daniel um about twenty about two thousand dollars and i think the shock mount is another 300 that's what happens when you get up in these expensive microphones even the shock mounts the shock mounts cost more than than some of the microphones just the way it works sorry um okay so but let's talk about this let's talk about this microphone the reason i have these two the the original reason why why i said well i'll put them next to each other is because they both say they're transformerless now the transformer is just a you know a piece of electronic equipment that li lives inside here for you and me what does it mean to be transformerless i don't know I don't know. Never really needed to know what the difference was. I, you know, there are other microphones that have transformers in them and some that don't. I'm sure they'll say it makes something about the sound smoother. I don't know. Maybe it does. I don't know. I just know they're both transformerless. And I know that TLM, that sort of was an indicator of the transformerless uh, design. So I said, well, I'll compare. Compare these two. I, I find it very helpful when you're listening, trying to listen to how a microphone sounds to at least compare it to something, to something else. So, that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> but the comparison between them is, or the differences between, there's actually some fairly significant differences between these microphones. And I think you'll hear it um, as we do co go back and forth between them. They do sound, they do sound somewhat different. Their, their, their profile, their sound signature is somewhat different. Let's talk about some of the features of the CU-51 and you'll get a sense of, of what I mean. The first thing that I find that's interesting about the CU-51, and this is the only microphone I've encountered that I've actually used, that is a dual diaphragm, but it's a dual diaphragm in the sense of like a two-way speaker. So this has a two diaphragms that are set over each other. One is sensitive to the highs and one is sensitive to the lows in the same way that you'd have a, a speaker a two-way speaker that's got a tweeter for the highs and a woofer for the lows. This one actually has two diaphragms facing me in order to, and they're in each one of them is tuned to different frequencies and they're crossed over and they're mixed into a single signal downstream in the microphone. 
I think that's really, I think that's really interesting. It's the, the approach they've taken. So they're too smaller. I think they're half inch diaphragms. As I look in there, it's pretty significantly different than the Neumann, which is a one inch single diaphragm. It's just the, the, the way they do it. It's uh, whatever, whatever Sankin wants to accomplish with that microphone. That was the, that was the design decision that they, that they've made for all intents and purposes doesn't mean anything. You don't get two different signals out of the microphone or anything like that, but it's just the design. They, I think they mean, I think they, uh, one, I, I think their goals were, it, it makes it so it is more tonally even, even if you're off axis, even as you're closer or farther away from it, that the tone of this microphone stays extremely, extremely consistent as you move around. Whereas other microphones, Maybe the the TLM that as you move from side to side, get certainly get closer and farther away, that the tone of the microphone changes. It actually changes the EQ curve of the microphone, for lack of a better word. Neither of these microphones have any buttons, any switches, or anything like that. But that actually, it, it makes for something interesting. So in many microphones that we've tested, there's a switch on there that is a high pass filter. And what that means is you turn that switch on and it will block sound below a certain frequency and everything above that frequency passes through. The high above passes through. And so they do that, they have that switch to offset the proximity effect. The proximity effect is the tendency of a microphone that as you get closer to it, the EQ of the microphone changes and you'll tend to get bassier the closer to a sound source you get. So as I get up close on the Neumann, as I get up close to it, you should notice that my voice does get bassier, that there's a tendency for the bass to become more prominent. And that Maybe it's something you want, but for things like recording instruments and recording singers and things like that, you might not want to have to keep changing the EQ curve as you get closer or farther away from the mic. So if there's a part, portion of the, 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 the piece that you're, that you're creating, if there's a portion where you get close to it and you get farther away, you might actually have to change the EQ curve in order to remove that bass. Now the Sankin, on the other hand, even though there's no high pass filter on there, their claim is that this microphone really doesn't suffer much from proximity effect. So as I get closer to it and closer to it and closer to it, that the EQ curve of this microphone really doesn't change that much. I don't get bassier. I just get louder and closer and more inter intimate, but I don't actually get bassier. So that's actually pretty cool. So if you're a singer or something like that, and you like to work that mic and you get close to it and you get farther away from it, you want to still sound like you, maybe. This is the microphone that can help you achieve that. So you don't have to be so rigidly locked to a certain distance from the microphone. You can actually get right up on it and not have a proximity effect to worry about. It's pretty cool. The other byproduct that they say of, the, of this particular design is it's very flat. So the Neumann um, often is considered a very presence boosted mic. It can be sort of hyped up. It, can, it has a real, uh, a real airiness to it. <clears throat> Whereas the, the Sankin is pretty much flat. When you look at that frequency response graph, it doesn't have a strong presence boost. Even though it's a really clear mic, it doesn't, and it doesn't sound dull. I don't think it sounds dull by any stretch. It's not, it's not hyped up the way, the way this one is. It's very neutral. But they say that neutrality will, will stay exactly the same all the way up to fully 90 degrees off axis on this microphone. So as I move my voice over to the side and over to the side, I'm 90 degrees off this microphone right now. And they, what they say is that you might get louder, but the tonality doesn't change as you move to the side. Whereas some of the other microphones... I'm not sure if the Neumann has it too, too much, uh, but some microphones that as you move off to the side, I'm 90 degrees off the Neumann, that their tonality can change. It might get a little warmer. It might get a little bit more muted. Um, it might actually change the way you sound. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm at the very end of a bad bout of bronchitis, so I've been, I've been sick. I'm losing my voice just in this little bit. So you have two different uh, ways to try and achieve sonic clarity. 
one, you've got the, the Neumann and its classic Neumann sound, and here you've got the Sankin. I, I will say that it... I'm hesitant to use the word clinical because I think it's just precise, but it doesn't cl clinical. When I think of the word clinical for a, a microphone, it makes it sound lifeless and, and dull, but I don't think this microphone sounds neither lifeless nor dull. I think it sounds really nice and clear and I don't want to say present, but it sounds, it sounds smooth and clear, and I've been really happy with it. I've gotten to record a little bit with it, and I'm really, I'm really impressed with the mic. I sorry, should be for the price, right? You better be impressed with the. It, it better sound good for the price point that you're going to pay for it. Uh, but that is a, uh, that's my impressions of the microphone. I don't know a ton about the company Sankin. I do know that they make a very wide range of microphones. They're really well known in um, on movie sets. I believe that their their lavaliers are quite. Um, Quite frequently used the Sankin lavalier mics. They uh, make some boundary mics. They make shotgun mics, and they also make this really uh, interesting microphone that um, has a really super extended frequency um, sensitivity. They have a microphone that will go all the way up to a hundred k. Can hear frequencies all the way up to a hundred k. I'm sure that there are uses for that. Probably not in the voiceover world, but uh, there are microphones that will go all the way up to a hundred hundred k. All sorts of microphones, but that's what Sankin does. They make microphones, and that's it. They don't make any other equipment. They're they're just they've been doing it forever. I think these two companies have been around for about the same amount of time. Sankin is, I think, is still owned, family owned, since 1923, if I recall correctly. And uh, Neumann also was founded in the early 1920s. Now they've subsequently been sold to Sennheiser. Uh, but they're, they're two real, just venerable microphone companies. They've been around for a long, long, long time. The Sankin CU-51. Man, what a nice mic. What a nice mic. I, the thing I, when I was reading and doing some research, the one thing that people, that resonated with people, and I'm not sure why it matters, but I guess it does matter to some people, is the look of the microphone. It's about the size of like a Red Bull can. It's uh, it's much narrower uh, as opposed to um, most of the other microphones that we have. They're a little bit a little bit fatter. This one is really like a Red Bull can, and people really don't like the color of it. I don't really care <laughs> care one way or the other, but it does. If there's one thing that I'm going to say that's clinical about this microphone, it is the color. It's matte brown. It's like um, the <laughs> like the halls of my high school were. <laughs> Matters to somebody. Doesn't matter to me. I just care about how it sounds. Um, so that's the Sankin CU-51. Sorry, I'm getting hoarse. I can feel it. I'm going to cut it short. The Sankin CU-51 dual diaphragm cardioid. Oh, I didn't talk about the pattern. Cardioid condenser microphone. Cardioid. It's sensitive just from the front. If you've seen my videos before, you know that a cardioid pattern means there's a lobe of sensitivity from the front, very insensitive from the back very insensitive from the back of this microphone and it's sensitive to about 90 degrees off the side so as you move off to the side which gives you a nice broad range of area in front that you can speak into the microphone allows two people to talk into the microphone at one time things like that um, so but they are I, I can't believe I, I don't remember if I said cardioid in the beginning or not so these are both cardioid microphones so what do you think of the sound differences between them do you do you think they sound different I think they sound a little bit different. Um, but I can't say that I think one sounds worse than the other. I just think that they sound they sound different. If I didn't hear them compared next to each other, I don't think I would be I don't think I would be frustrated or say, oh, that's no good or that's too bright or that's too harsh. Or nothing, nothing like that. I, I I think this is a really, a really lovely sounding microphone. Really lovely sounding microphone. And maybe it's the one that's for you. If you got a got a couple of couple of large sitting around in your pocket, maybe this is the one for you. Could be, could be, could be. In any respect, it was loaned to me, so I wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it interesting. I don't know. I really did. I really did. Anyway, that's the Sankin CU51 microphone. So now go out and get yourself a microphone, maybe even a dual diaphragm two way microphone. What? Yeah, but get yourself a microphone. Just get one. Go out and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.